All right, let's do number 50 and 54 here on this last video. 50 is a really easy question. We see um, a five kilogram bucket of water is being raised by a well. So this is the lifting question that we uh, talked about right at the end of the notes. Uh, we know that the force of tension is equal to M times A plus G. Okay, and force of tension is just the force you gotta pull up with. Um, well, that sure looks like an M right there. That sure looks like an A. It's got a meter per second squared. And we know that G is uh, 9.8. So is it as simple as uh, this times that plus uh, 9.8? Yes, it is. So let's, uh, can, let's move on to number uh, 54. This one being pretty easy, number 50. All right. 54 is probably the worst one on here. It's going to take me a little bit of time to do it. Let's, uh, let's tackle it. Here we go. 54. A box of books weighing 319 newtons is shoved across the floor by a force of 485 exerted downward at an angle of 35 degrees. So uh, we'll just draw the box here. Uh, we're pushing it downwards at uh, 35 degrees and with a force of 485 newtons. So there's your 485. We know that the weight of the books is 319 newtons. Now it also tells us that the mu sub k is 0.57. So I know I have a frictional force here. And let's just write the mu down. Uh, the mu sub k is 0.57. And the question is, how long does it take to move the books four meters starting from rest? So I know my vi is zero. I know my delta x is four. And this is probably going to be one of those questions where I'm going to solve for A using F equals MA here, finding the F first. And then once I know A, I'm going to plug it into a kinematic equation and solve for T. And that's really what it's looking for. How long does it take? So it's, it's going to be a multi-step problem. All right. So the first thing I know is I got to look for the sum of the forces in the X direction. But I realize right away I don't know the frictional forces. Now, in order to find the frictional forces, I know that uh, force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force, that I'm gonna have to find the normal force first. Okay, so that's gonna be step one. Well, uh, find the normal. Now, we know the normal is the sum of the forces in the y direction, right? The opposite of that. So, let's find the sum of the forces in the y direction. We're just gonna go V sine theta, all of my, my vectors here. So, we got a 45 sine of 35, and we got a 319 sine of 90. So we all clear on that? 45 sine of 35, 319 sine of 90. Now they're both going downwards in the y direction, so we're going to make them both negative. Okay, um, so you're going to get the sum of the forces here in the y direction, and that is equal to the normal force. So now I know the normal. <coughs> Actuality is the opposite of that. So this is going to come out to be a negative number. So the normal is in the other direction, so it'll be a positive number. And all we're going to do is we're going to take that. So what we can do is maybe make this an absolute value, so you don't forget you've got to make it a positive. We're going to plug it into this equation. Now, we already know the mu sub k is 0.57. <clears throat> so we're going to multiply that by 0.57. That's going to give us my force of friction here, right? Um, once I know that, then now I know all the forces I need to know. So this, I guess, is step two over here to solve for the second to the last part, and that is this, what happens to the sum of the forces in the x direction, because that's the direction the box is moving in is horizontally. So I know the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to ma, and that's really what's driving all of the work that we're doing here. We know the sum of the forces in the x, is equal to m times a. So I'm doing all this work to find the sum of the forces in the x direction, which is just v cosine theta. So let's uh, put it down here. I know v cosine theta is the sum of the forces in the x, and let's just do it. I know it's 45 sine of, or cosine, 45 cosine of 35. That's going to be positive. It's going to the right, minus this force of friction here times the cosine of zero degrees, because it's 
straight back. All right? That's going to give me an answer here that is the sum of the forces in the x direction. You all see that? Now, we don't worry about the 319 because it's not going horizontally. It's going straight down. In fact, if you want to take the cosine of 90, you knock yourself out, but it's zero. So this has no effect on the forward motion of the, uh, the box. Well, I know this answer right here is equal to MA. Okay? Now, I'm looking for A. I know the sum of the forces in the x direction. I know what M is. To get M, we just go 319 divided by 9.8. So let's go up here. M is going to be 319 divided by 9.8. Why? Because F equals MA. So to get M, we're just going to divide F by A. That's the force. Acceleration is 9.8. That tells us M. So we're doing all this work to get A. Okay. Now once you've got A, now we got one more step, which is taking advantage of all this other information they got us. So that's step four. Oh, sorry, we didn't label this. That's step three. So we went one, two, three. Now we're in step four over here. Okay, follow me. I'm going to use this equation. I'm just going to flat out tell you. Plus one half at squared. This is how far we're traveling. We know that's four. That's zero. It's starting from rest, so VIT becomes zero, plus one half A, and remember where A comes from, over here. It's going to be the sum of the forces in the x direction divided by that product, or sorry, that uh, quotient there, T squared. So look how easy it is to find T. T is equal to the square root of 4 over half of whatever A is over there. All right, and that's uh, going to give me the time it takes for this box to slide four meters, and that is letter A on 54. B says, hey, what if the mu sub k changes? Well, the lucky thing is you can go right to step two and just multiply the new mu value times what you got in the first part, and then that goes over here, 45 cosine 35 minus that product, times the cosine of zero, that gives you a new f of x, solve for your a, and I think you're going to be shocked when you get the a. Don't be surprised if it comes out to be a negative number. Now what that means is that the sum of the forces in the x direction were greater in the direction of friction. And what you should say in your mind is, wait, if friction uh, forces are greater than what I'm pulling with, will the box move? Hint, hint. All right, so I'll give you one last look at this. And you can see we got four steps here. It's pretty involved. Uh, so good luck with it. And uh, this is the correct version that you need to follow, okay? All right.